Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hiranyaka Shipu Uvacha Varadhanu Chatam Tata Swaditam Kinchim Uttamam Kalainaita Vata Yusman Yad Asid Sat Guru Bhavan Harani Kashipu said, My dear Pallad, my dear son, O long lived one, for so much time you have heard many things from your teacher. Now please repeat to me whatever you think is the best of that knowledge. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In this verse, Harani Kashipu inquires from his son what he had learned from his guru. Prahlad Maharaj's gurus were of two kinds, Sanda and Amarka, the sons of Sukaracharya. In the seminal decession, succession were the gurus appointed by his father. But his other guru was the exalted Narada Muni, who had instructed Prahlad when Prahlad was within the womb as his mother. Prahlad Maharaj's responded to the inquiry of his father with the instructions he had received from his spiritual master, Narada. Thus, there was again a difference of opinion, opinion between Prahlad Maharaj wanted to relate the best thing he had learned from his spiritual master, whereas Harani Kashipu expected to hear about the politics and diplomacy Prahlad had learned from Sanda and Amarka. Now the dissension between the father and son became increasingly in intense. As Prahlad Maharaj began to say what he had learned from his guru, Narada Muni. Keep going down the page. I can't see. Okay. Gyan Timidanda Syan Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gadavena Maha Mom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Srimakte Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Vasyatya De Satarine Panchakopa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Evacha Paditanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Srivasadi Gaur, Bhaktivinoda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So continue in the theme of Parani Kashipu wanting to instruct his son, and he had made the arrangements for the boy to enter into, we can't call it Guru Kula, we, we call it Asura Kula, a place where he learns not about spiritual topics, but about hardcore materialistic adventures and how to understand those things and become successful in a materialistic way. Prahlad Maharaj was obedient to his father, although his father was a typical materialist, whereas Prahlad was enlightened in spiritual knowledge, as it's mentioned here, from his spiritual master, the best of all the demigods, Sri Narada Muni. But he followed his father by going to school and acting as a good boy. But at the same time, and you will read in the future how he didn't follow his teachers and took the opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness to his spirit, his schoolmates, which became a great sh chagrin for his father, who became quite angry. And that'll be unfolded later. But here, what we see 
is that the father is supposed to lead the son in the proper way. It says in the in the scriptures in Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, fifth chapter, it mentions that one should not become father, one should not become mother, one should not become guru, one should not become a teacher. If they cannot direct their students, their children, their disciples towards the actual goal of life. And the goal of life is clearly explained by Krishna in both the Bhagavad Gita and by the pure devotees representing Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam. What is that goal of life? Is to inquire into that goal of life, which is the nature of the soul's relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the actual understanding. So this verse from the fifth canto, fifth chapter, spoken by the Supreme Lord himself, Sri Rishabdev, who is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord, he explains, now here we have the opposite. The father is leading the son away from the goal of life and towards a whole materialistic program of power, control, uh, development of materialistic amenities. Rani Kashipu, we classify him as a demon, and he is, because he usurped the demigod's position. He put himself as the supreme power within existence. No one could defeat him. He had a strong military behind him. And he was always conquering and exploiting and occupying. That was his program. So we might say his, his uh, program was very selfish and in line with the qualities, as Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, of those who are of the nature of demons. But fortunately, although he is a demon, he had a son that was quite the opposite. His son actually was a great soul who somehow or other came into his family by some un unknown fortune of Harani Kasipu. But Harani Kasipu is seeing his son in a different way, not as his good fortune, but as someone who is going against what he feels is best for himself and for Pallad. And you'll see the next verse, which is actually two verses, Pallad responds to this by listing the nine processes of devotional service. It's one of the longest discussions on the whole process of devotional service in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the purport takes up from 9 to 11 pages, describing very detailed by Srila Prabhupada what are the nine processes and what are the how what is the ingredients that make up the execution of these nine processes. The so Prahlad Maharaj, he's not afraid to speak the truth. And this is a very important part of this whole discussion being intimidated by his father, he's not. He wants to enlighten his father in what is the actual reality of life, devotion to the Supreme Lord. And he is not worried about how his father will react because he wants to give him the best. It's interesting. Prahlad Maharaj loves his father as a father, but at the same time, he disagrees with his father because he knows his father is simply, as Prahlad Maharaj meant, the best, he called him Asurya Bhajya, which means he is the best of the demons. And so Prahlad Maharaj was very respectful 
to his father, but he didn't compromise the truth in order to put this kind of respect foremost. He kept the respect in relationship to his, his, his position as a son, but at the same time, he spoke what is the truth. And to speak the truth, especially nowadays, is very unpalatable because we find that there are, not there are Hanukkah Poos out there, there are, of course, but there are people who don't want the absolute truth. They want a mixture of something material along with something spiritual. But Pallad Maharaj is not going to patronize or compromise the truth in the name of uh, just making friends and being popular. He is going to speak the truth, and therefore he is called a Mahajan, Mahajan Oyena Kasatsapanta. He is qualified to teach the, the eternal religious principles to the whole world. He's only a five year old boy, but he's highly learned in all of the uh, philosophical teachings that make up pure devotional service. And therefore, he can't compromise because he is self-realized at the same time. He knows what is right. He's experiencing it. He's in touch with the Supreme Personality of Godhead through his, in his heart through devotional service. He loves his father, but at the same time, he cannot go along with something that is untruth. <laughs> Sometimes in our ways of dealing with others, we somehow rather compromise what we believe is right in order to keep some kind of relationship based on something less than the actual truth. And of course, relationships are important, but speaking the truth is more important because those relationships that are based on the principles of truth are lasting and beneficial for everyone involved. So therefore, one should speak the truth in a palatable way, satyam priyam, satyam bruyam, not compromising the truth, but presenting it in a way that is pleasing to the person one is speaking to and that is the important part that uh, it is done not to agitate, but to enlighten. And therefore, combining both of those principles, one becomes an ideal representative of the Supreme Personality of God by speaking what is actually, just like us in the Krishna Conscious Movement, where do we get our knowledge from? Not from secular society, not from the, the news media, not from the New Age movement, but we get it from Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada is in the line of the Siblic succession, and he's getting his knowledge from his spiritual master. Today, we are fortunate to have the opportunity to celebrate Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, 150th anniversary of his appearance in the world today, the 29th of... Uh, February, and uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was a person who never compromised, who never patronized, who spoke the truth even where people did not like it. Well, whether people like it or not is secondary because the truth is beneficial for everyone. It's not limited to a person or a class of people, or a certain culture, or a certain historical time period. It is always the truth. And what is that truth? That all living entities are, as Krishna says, my parts and parcels. Mamai vamso jiva loke, jiva, lo, jiva bhuta sanatana, mastastani indriyani, prakriti stani karshati. Krishna mentions that in the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, that all living entities in this material world 
are my parts and parson. And he also, and Lord Chaitanya emphasis on Jivair Surupai, Krishnera, Nityadas, that we all have a, a eternal relationship with service to the Supreme Lord based on the principle of bhakti. Bhakti means to acquiesce or to open that relationship through the process of service in a mood to please the Supreme Lord. In other words, how do we please the Supreme Lord? We follow the instructions of his representatives. Now, his representatives are his ambassadors in the material world to represent the Lord and teach the conditioned souls how to, to approach the Supreme Lord and how to please the Supreme Lord through service to the Supreme Lord. So devotees very carefully understand the teachings given by Srila Prabhupada and by their spiritual master and apply that and speak that. Some people will like it. Some people may take issue with it. Those who are hardcore materialists will not. They will find exceptions with it and will, will say that there is more to life than just worshiping the Supreme Lord. No, there is not, actually, because when you worship the Supreme Lord, everything in life is included within that process of devotion to the Supreme Lord, because it's not exclusive. Worship of the Supreme Lord is the, is the culture of human life that includes everything that the, the living entity needs to live and at the same time make progress in spiritual life. So, therefore, Prahlad Maharaj is simply going to speak about what he learned from his spiritual master. That's all. Not what he learned from his teachers, which Harani Kasipu has personally appointed like that. So, yeah, so in this situation, we are in a, we are in a similar situation as Prahlad Maharaj. We are surrounded by people who want to hear something different than what is the absolute truth because they think it's too fanatical, it's too difficult, it's not practical, it's out of historical context, whatever. It doesn't facilitate good material success in life. But Pallad Maharaj understands that simply by worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as it says, Guru Mukha Padma Vakya Chichete Koriya Aikya Anar Kamiyo Mani As. This is spoken by Srila Naratam Das Thakur. He says, the words of my spiritual master are my life. They're my nourishment. They're my food. They're everything I need to become fully successful in all aspects of life because they cover actually the goal of life and everything is included in them. So here we, we see now we have we can't put ourselves in the same position as Pallad Maharaj, but Pallad Maharaj is being harassed and you'll see and threatened, and then ultimately attempts to destroy him by his own father because he's speaking something different than what his father wants him to hear. <laughs> now, this is the way of life. If our superiors, in whatever position they are, are contrary to what is the actual purpose of life, then those superiors actually must be rejected because they are leading us in the wrong way. And Prahlad Maharaj would rather be subjected to harassment and whatever else that his father is going to give than to compromise the truth. Therefore, because if, you, if one lives by the truth, they actually live. If they live by something other than the truth, they might find themselves without any threat from the materialistic society, but at the same time, they're never happy because they, they're living something, they're living a lie, or they're living some compromise, 
consciousness based on other people's desire for their way of life. Mm -hmm. But Prahlad Maharaj is not like that. He heard directly from his spiritual master while he was in the womb of his mother. It is, he was able to retain everything he heard. His mother was taken by Narada Muni to his ashram in order to protect the mother at the time when Prahlad Maharaj was in the womb because the demigods had thought that Prahlad Maharaj's mother was going to give birth to a demon. And therefore, they were about to wait for the boy to, to emerge and then kill him. The demigods were going to do that. Rani Kashibu had left. He had gone for greater forms of austerity, and he left the family. Bernard Muni, being Trikala Gyan, knows past, present, and future, he came and he intervened and said, no, this woman is... Uh, Carrying a pure devotee. The demigods accepted what Narada said, and then he protected her. And during that protection, he spoke to her, too. Also, transcendental knowledge. But Prahlad was in the womb, and he was able to hear everything that Narada, Narada instructed. And when he came out, he was already self-realized. This is amazing. This is also just to deviate a little bit from the side of the topic. There's those who are women who carry children that as devotees, you want to give the best start on your child in life towards the goal of life, Krishna consciousness. Therefore, it is mentioned, highly recommended, that the pregnant lady surround herself with transcendental sound vibration. And therefore, the child picking up on the mother's vibration will also become benefited from that sound vibration, whether it's kirtan, or eating, or various types of spiritual sound vibrations that are beneficial. Then that child will come out and have a nice start in life towards the goal of life. So, yeah, so that was Prahlad Maharaj. And so one who is fully Krishna conscious now cannot compromise just for the sake to patronize others because they understand, how can I not speak the truth when the truth is not only the truth, but it's beneficial for everyone, even my father. Prahlad was thinking, if I could make my father a devotee, if he could understand the truth of life, then this would make, he would actually be happy. He could see his father was not happy. He could see his father, although he was very powerful and he had conquered practically the whole universe, still he wasn't happy. And that's an indication that material life even in the best possible way with all power facilities and all of the riches that come with it, cannot fulfill the need of a soul. And his father was, although he was had all of these things, and no, no one could oppose him. In fact, he would cause fear in the, in the rest of the universe simply by thinking about doing more plans for conquering Still, he was never happy. And Prahlad Maharaj knew that if I can give him the truth, then he will be benefited and ultimately he will become a devotee of the Lord. So he wasn't worried about his own future, Prahlad. Prahlad knew that whatever happens is Krishna's arrangement. Therefore, if I'm getting any difficulties, I simply pray to Krishna and and ask for Krishna's mercy. And that's what he did. So we're just getting on the, on what we say, the threshold of this wonderful pastime now where it opens up into a, a nice discussion between Prahlad and his father. And this is the very beginning right here. 
And so um, the essence of this particular thing is that he wanted to give his father the truth rather than to simply compromise to make his father feel like he was okay. But he, he was, my dear father, you're not okay. <laughs> and this is the reason why. <laughs> okay, so I'll... We can stop there and can open it up for questions. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful stories. Thank you for sharing. It's so important for all women, not only women, even pregnant mothers, especially to hear those sound, to get the sound vibration to give the embryo a good start in life already. Maharaj, I do see there are certain questions in the chat box. Um, so... Brasadha Prabhuji is asking, Hare Krishna Maharaj, what was the two aspects of speaking Maharaj said? Is it speaking truth and in a pleasing way? Interesting question. So he's asking, do we just blurt out the truth or do we need to speak it in a pleasing way? I mean, it's called Satyam Priyam, Satyam Bruyam. Mm -hmm. uh, pleasing and beneficial. Uh, and 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 beneficial because people will listen more to what is said if it's said in a way that is pleasing without comp the point is there's an art to that one has to not compromise the essence of what is one saying in order to put forth the idea of pleasing pleasing means that there is a respect given to the recipient in such a way as to speak to them the truth, but at, in such a way that they'll be able to accept or at least listen to the truth. That's not across the board, though. There are some persons, no matter what you do or how you mm -hmm. say, will always be contrary and con what we say, what's the word, um, contentious. Uh, so, I mean, if you try to speak some truth to the atheist, the atheist obviously will always uh, either run away or try to speak about their philosophy of godlessness. So, but in essence, this is how we try to present it for a general audience. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. It's always a good idea not to blurt out right away, but to take the situation pros and cons into consideration while saying the truth thing. Yes, we can try. Um, the point, is, should you the point is not not to compromise in the name of being pleasing. That's the that's the point has to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's what uh, Prabhuji also wrote on the chat. Devotees, please feel free to unmute yourself, raise your hand, pose your questions on the chat box. Maharaj is here to answer all your queries. Maharaj, one quick question. Hey, Darshini. Sorry, go ahead, Ma Mataji. Sorry, I, I just saw Darshini Mataji raising her hand. I'm not sure if you were able to see Mataji. Yes, Darshini Mataji. Darshini Mataji, please go ahead, Mata. Thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanvik Pranam, so glories to Srila Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, I had this question that, you know, we see that Anarada Muni spoke Krishna Katha to Kayadu, and because Prahalat Maharaj was in the womb, Prahalat Maharaj absorbed all the instructions. But when it comes to Kayadu, who had, you know, direct uh, Shravanam from Narada Muni, Mm -hmm. But Kayadu's heart wasn't changed. She was still attached to Hiranyakashipu. So many mm -hmm. times we see that, you know, devotees along with us who are there, they are so, uh, you know, uh, they're so receptive to the message that's been given. And it's the same classes, the same resources, and they make rapid advancement. But we have not been receptive. Our heart has not been receptive. So what is the thing that we have to do to see to it that our heart and mind is receptive to whatever we are listening and we can make advancement and just not leave it, you know, how can we absorb all that we are hearing rather than just hearing and leaving it? Well, there is a 
a protocol that is described in the Padma Purana for receptivity of transcendental knowledge. The protocol is one, faith in the speaker. Yeah. In other words, you have to understand that that speaker is speaking what is the truth, at least from that, in a theoretical way anyway, that this person is qualified to speak. There are people who are not qualified to speak, but speak anyway. But speaking means to represent those who come before in disciplic succession. So in other words, faith in the speaker, that's the first qualification for the hearer. Second is not to filter what they say through our own interpretations. In other words, to be open to hear carefully what is being said without the filtering process of trying to compare it to something that uh, you might have heard in the past from someone else. In other words, in other words, there is the challenging attitude in the process of hearing. And that will block the receptivity and you'll miss actually the essence of what's being said. So the first part is faith in the speaker. The second one is humility. The third is destroying the faults of the mind. So when we speak sometimes, or when someone speaks, the mind goes somewhere else. It travels to some other subject matter. It travels to whatever. It, it travels in many different places. What we want to do, what we thought we should have did. In other words, in other words, we lose contact with. We hear the words, but we're not. We're, our minds are somewhere else. So that's called destroying the faults of the mind. So bring the mind back to the sound vibration. And one has to be very diligent to keep that mind connected to the sound so they, they can pick up the essence of what's being said. Now, the results of following those first three is the fourth one. Based on that, two things must occur. In other words, if you're following the first three, you'll get one of these two results. One, you'll get realization of what's being said. You'll understand it, you'll accept it, and you'll uh, benefit from it, at least in your consciousness. The second thing is questions. If you don't get a, a, a clear understanding for whatever reason, although you've been listening, or certain things are beyond your ability to understand, or something appears to be one way, but you might understand it in another way, and so you ask questions. So if we don't get either questions or realization, that means we weren't really attentive to the subject matter for whatever reason. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah, so follow those. Follow, yeah, this is a discussion. Follow that principle of accepting who you speak, hear from as an mm -hmm. authority. Don't take anyone unless they are in a position of authority. Just like if we hear from the politicians, you know, we can understand that they have their own agendas and they're not always speaking for the benefit of, of people in general. But when you hear from devotion, devotees, you understand that they are representing their spiritual master. They are representing the parampara. They're speaking based on scripture. They're speaking based on their own realizations in the process of devotional service. And try not to speak here in a challenging mood. Bring the mind back when the mind wanders to the sound vibration, carefully listen. And then you'll get knowledge. And if you don't get knowledge, you'll you, at least your intellect will be stimulated through the process of hearing where you'll ask questions. 
This is the process of hearing. If we don't understand something, ask the question. We should not leave. We should not leave with doubts after hearing. We should be clear after what has been said, and that clarification comes by realization or through the process of questions and answers. Thank you. That, that's from the Padma Puran. It describes the whole process of how to hear properly. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful to you for this answer. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Then we pray and answer Krishna. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji, for the wonderful question. And thank you, Maharaj, for your brilliant answer. Maharaj, piggybacking on that question, uh, as Ma Mataji is asking, how to clear the consciousness because what to become more receptive or to get more mercy of the Lord. Uh, so when we hear from devotees or from other Maharajas, there is one I have one question, Maharaj. I'm slightly perplexed. Um, so devotees will say, you know, Krishna, worshipping Lord Krishna, the Lord Supreme is not easy. You have to do it like in very, very procedure. Uh, so it's better to go via, of course, uh, your Guru Maharaj, then you go to Gauranga, Gornita, etc. It's more easy to please. However, in the other uh, we hear that uh, Lord Krishna is so merciful. He's so personable. He's so relatable. Go ahead, uh, talk to your Paramatma. Go ahead and try to realize it more. What is more easier way for you, Maharaj? Well, the question is obvious. That what is Paramatma anyway? The Paramatma is the spiritual master. The spiritual mm -hmm. master comes in two forms. In, in dwelling, he's Paramatma. Externally, he's the spiritual master. It's the same person. And therefore, it says that the spiritual master is the external manifestation of Paramatma. So are we so advanced that we can hear directly from Paramatma in, in the heart? When we still have, may still have material desires, and those material desires are also speaking to us mm. to get some attention, some fulfillment. So the process is, you know, tadvidi pratipatana, pratipasyena sevaya, to approach the spiritual master, inquire in a humble way, and be ready to offer service if it's if that's required. So this makes everything really easy. If we think we're so qualified, we can go directly to the to super soul. But it says that only when the mind is fully controlled mm. can one hear super soul. And super soul is saying the same thing as the spiritual master is saying the same thing as super soul. There's no difference. When you become fully at least self-realized to a certain degree then you can then you can come to the level of hearing directly from super soul we can't jump up to that stage of, of bhakti the best is to continually hear from the spiritual master well, even those who are advanced even those who are advanced still always always are eager to hear from their spiritual master mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. Seeking your blessings to understand things more clearly. Seeking your blessings to clear the consciousness, Maharaj. Thank you. We have question from um, Dr. Kripa, Kripa Gavalli, if you could kindly, Mataji. Uh, thank, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji, for allowing me to answer the question. Mataji, thank you, Mataji. Sure, Mataji, go ahead with your question. Mataji, please, uh, please accept me humble obeisances to Maharaj. And I have one uh, doubt and this thing. So, uh, why this uh, Prahlad Maharaj is a very small and he was so devoted to Lord Vishnu. From, this, from his womb, he was very devoted. Uh, 
that because he was received that blessing from narada muni and now i am having the little doubt whether why why he was born in that family because he could have born in another uh, chel the thing and deva the deva why he was born a small boy why was born, why he has to suffer like that the boy he has to suffer like that and then lord is coming the end i want to that uh, uh, that poor boy is suffering so much from the trying to make the uh, father uh, devotee mother and dream uh, everything he is suffering from the hill they are is putting down then also he is having that feel he yeah, uh, that uh, but uh, by his story is uh, teaching us to become more faith from my childhood i i saw this uh, i studied this um, prakrada story only i became a devotee first of all my small age itself i was become a devotee for narsimha and then only my little little uh, the thing has developed in my ji i want to just i want to clarify and then a previous birth of this uh, prakrada magaraj you know he was uh, something he was done and he was born like this or why he was born to that such a, such a demonic here in the job thank you that's my question hmm well a pure devotee is is not is not anywhere fearful of anything because they are simply to have the shelter of the supreme lord so although it appears he went through a lot of difficulties he was put in that position by the lord to preach to his father and to somehow or other and of course if you follow the whole past time to the conclusion you'll find that his father got liberation at the end because he was killed directly by the supreme personality of godhead which is a very difficult situation to achieve even to be killed by the supreme lord directly one automatically becomes free from all material uh, desires and actually attains liberation which he did so that was a mercy that was mercy upon harani kashipu that this pure devotee son came into his family prahlad uh, harani kashipu had five sons the other four were demons and prahlad was the exception <laughs> So Pallad was there to uh, do the world, the work, the the mission of the Lord by liberating his father, because his father actually was a fallen demigod who fell from the spiritual world, and that's the whole story of the three births of Jai and Vijay, which is mentioned in the third canto. They each had to take three births as demons, and Harani Kashipu. was the first birth of the three births the second birth he became ravana and the third birth he became um shishupal and all time they were killed three times and then ultimately they went back to the spiritual world so this this is all the lord's plan to elevate jay and vijay back to their position in the spiritual world and for for a pure devotee they accept difficulties as an opportunity to serve the lord for us they may it may seem from our perspective that it's very difficult and unfair but for the pure devotee they're very happy to act on behalf of the lord to save the conditioned souls even if they have to undergo a lot of difficulty on a personal level you see the example of shila prabhupada how much difficulty he had to do to start this movement and to keep it going you study the life of prabhupad it was very difficult practically impossible especially at the age of 70 but prabhupad did it with the desire to please his spiritual master and to propagate krishna consciousness so for a pure devotee they accept suffering as and there's a verse you can find it in the 8th um, canto of shrimad bhagavatam that the highest form of worship of the supreme personality of god this is the way the verse says the highest form of worship of the supreme personality of god 
as to accept suffering on behalf of the Lord in order to spread the mercy of the Lord. That's the highest form of service to the Supreme Lord. But Prahlad Maharaj was on that level. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Tadatnam. Koti Koti Tandatnam. Understood, Prabhuji. You want the, the verse yes. reference is the eighth canto, seventh chapter, verse number 44. 8744 describes that the great souls accept suffering, and that is the highest form of worship of the Supreme. Of worship, of worship. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji, for the great question. So, Maharaj, just a quick question um, out of curiosity. So, this is this a Leela that in every yuga it's going to keep happening? The Leela of Prahlad Maharaj, Narsimha Dev, it keeps happening, right, Maharaj? The Lord's activities are Nitya Leela. Nitya Leela, yes. Yeah. But then again, you have to see whether that applies to all the incarnations of the Lord or just to Krishna as the as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That I'm not sure of. That I'm not sure. But I think in this case, this is Nitya Leela also. Thank you. Manjuri Mataji, would you like to go ahead with your question, Mata? Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Nina Mataji, for allowing me to ask the question. And Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada and Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Uh, Maharaj, such a wonderful class, very short and sweet and, and powerful. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about this is, you know, in Bhagavad Gita, we, we and I think you also touched upon this, uh, this point uh, in the beginning of your um, discussion or lecture, that the truth has to be pleasing, uh, beneficial, um, and not agitating. So I, I understand that, you know, sometimes the two can be there. So Prahlad Maharaj, my, my, my question was, how come Prahlad Maharaj is still telling the truth to Hiranyakashipu? I know, um, you know, it could be the truth and it is beneficial for Hiranyakashipu, as you said, but it is still agitating his father. And then you answered the question just in your previous answer, that because Prahlad Maharaj was following the highest form of worship, which is to accept the suffering, uh, to spread the mercy. But in in general life, um, in our mundane life that we have, right? Um, or, or, you know, in the, in the devotee's life even. How does, you know, sometimes we try to speak the truth and we know it is beneficial. We speak in a pleasing way, but it still gets agitated. You know, the other person still get, may get agitated because it doesn't fit with their their thought process. So in this case, you know, and we keep, and they keep on speaking the same kinds of, um, I guess, you know, the same kind of things to us. And we, we keep on providing them the same kinds of advice, but at the same time, um, it doesn't, I guess, you know, they, they know this is the right advice, but it doesn't really, they can't follow it. So in this case, and it still agitates them. So I, I'm trying to understand you know, I, I heard that we should just pray for those kinds of souls then at, at some point. So how do we understand that? Should we accept the suffering? I mean, we're not great souls, but should we accept the suffering and still keep on, um, you know, preaching to this person or, or advising to this person, even if it's getting getting them agitated? Or should we just pray for this person? I'm really confused. I'm sorry. Is that clear, Maharaj? I don't know if I'm it's, 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 it's a question that's quite often asked. You know. and the thing is, when you when it becomes clear that the person doesn't want it, then why force it? You know, because all you're going to do is push them away farther. The, or another way is to look for another way to give the same thing. In a, in a way that may be more, just like sometimes we say, well, you know, take prasadam. So everyone can accept the fact that, all right, I'm going to take some nice food stuffs that, that are tasty. But it's prasadam, it's spiritual. It's not something that is just cooked out, out of sense gratification. It's been offered to the Lord. So this is one means of preaching, is to distribute and to encourage people to eat Krishna prasadam. 
so they get some spiritual benefit. And if they do that in a long-term way, then they become more inclined, and I use the word with emphasis, inclined to spiritual topics. It changes their heart. So the direct way is to give the, the philosophy or to invite them to a temple. Less direct way is just to... Um, to preaching is not always one way. If you if you go one way, it's just like sometimes you're slamming into a wall and the wall's not going to break. So maybe you should go and open the door and get on the other side of the wall instead of trying to break the wall down. So there's different ways to preach. <laughs> And uh, depending on the audience, and this is where you have to fit in and see what would be the most uh, viable way that you could reach that audience. And so that's an art that one has to practice. And yeah. sometimes it comes by um, what we call it trial and error. You learn what not to do. You learn what to do by preaching in different situations. Well, when it comes to family members, I think your your particular um, question was geared to family members. Then it becomes more difficult because um, they don't want to hear from their family members about what they should be doing, especially if they're in a, a position of authority for, for whatever reason. So... Um, Pray for them, that's one way. Offer prasadam, that's another way. Mm. Invite them to a, you know, to a spiritual festival where they can meet other people and get some friendship from that, some experience of in, the, in that type of uh, atmosphere. Oh, so if you're working on a particular set of people, in long term, yeah, when you're doing it one to one, like just giving a class and moving mm. on, then you can speak directly. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Nina, you're muted. We can't hear you. Thank you, Mataji. Now, I was just thanking uh, Mataji for asking this question because I think you asked for all of for all of us. A lot of us had the same question, Mataji. So thank you, Dila Mataji. I have a um, hand raised from ST. I'm so sorry if you could kindly announce your name and ask your question, please. Okay. Hi, Mr. Supriya. Okay, uh, Supriya. Pranam Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Since we are talking about this uh, Leela's that Lord plays, I have a question regarding a Kalki Avatar that Lord is about to take in Kali Yuga and especially to vanquish all those miscreants that are left behind. But my question is why Lord wants to wait so long? Why not we see the problem now itself since we are just a 5,000 Five thousand years in Kalki, uh, in Kali, Kali Yuga, we see so many problems around. Why not just? Uh, uh, why? I mean, generally, our tendency is to solve the problem when it is small instead of waiting for it to become big. So, why Lord wants to wait till the end of a Kali Yuga and then kill all those people? Because anyway, at the end of a Kali Yuga, there will be annihilation uh, and everything will be recreated again. So, at least from my, I don't see any point in having Kalki Avatar. So, can you just uh, tell us what, <laughs> what is the reason why Lord wants to? Well, whatever the Lord does is perfect. So, um, because he's the Supreme Lord, he's perfect. And therefore, he has a, follows a certain timetable. But you, you should understand one thing that the Lord has already appeared in this age as his holy name, Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar. So he is actually destroying the demoniac mentality through the process of Harinam Sankirtan. Many people are benefiting by that and becoming great devotees. So he's also appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
which is the incarnation, which is also Krishna. He's also known as Lord Jagannath in another form as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When the Lord comes, he's already here in at least two or three different forms to help purify the world. Kalki avatar come means when there is no more, when people are no longer able to accept anything, then he comes to finish off the demons that are left at that particular time. That's his mission. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maharaj. I have a very interesting question on the chat. Um, it says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, can one cook prasadam and after offering, give it to the other person without telling them that it is prasadam? Yeah, we do that sometimes. We do that. <laughs> we do that sometimes because we know people may be averse mm -hmm. to some kind of spiritual food. So... And this is called a Gyata Sukriti. Gyata Sukriti means unknowingly doing mm. devotional service. Thank so you, that, Maharaj. Yeah, that's fine. And the doctor oh. says, My dear, my dear patient, this medicine tastes very good and is beneficial. <laughs> it may not taste good, but he says it tastes good anyway. So you take it. <laughs> Wonderful. I have a question from Radha Jyoti Mataji, and she's saying, Hare Krishna, dear respected His Holiness Maharaj, I'm indebted to you for your teachings. You told us to keep going on on tough days, pick yourself and keep going. Even if you're not able to, it doesn't matter, but keep going and focus on the service. Chant and chant and uh, chant, try chant loud. This helped this helped me and it inspired me. I wanted to share this with you. Please bless me to serve more in devotion, but selflessly. So she's just sharing her thought. And there's one uh, from Mataji, His Holiness. Could you please teach on difference between realizations and reflections? How do we understand this? The realizations are the soul uh, awakening the spiritual knowledge. Reflections is just the mind uh, thinking about various topics. That's all. There's a difference. Realizations come from the soul into the mind. The reflections are just the activities of the mind uh, scanning the network of different thought processes or different topics. But Mataji, uh, but, uh, Maharaj, isn't it easy to get confused? Because I don't know which one is talking. Is it Maya or is it really the soul? Well, check it. Check it with the words of the spiritual master. But right. Check it with the words of scripture. These are our checkpoints. If it's there, then you can understand based on what the scriptures say what it is, whether it's Maya or Krishna. <laughs> The mind, will, the mind will dictate so many things. <laughs> but we have to see, is it in line with Guru? Is it in line with Shastra? Is it in line with the great saints that have gone in the past? If it does, then it is Krishna. If it's not, it may be just the workings of the material energy. That's all. So it's the power of discrimination also, Maharaj, maybe moment to moment. If we don't have um, spiritual master to confer every little thing, for example. Uh, so it's the sense of discrimination that we can use, probably. We discriminate every day. We live in this world based on discrimination. We accept things and we, you know, we accept certain things and we don't accept other things. If we have no discrimination, then we are, we'll, we will not be able to even live in this world. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. I think you just answered Hemi Mataji's question. She was asking, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, it's not always easy to find someone to ask the questions or guidance to questions. 
what would be best method to find directions in those circumstances? Well, I don't know if I agree with that premise. I think it's very easy to find people to ask. <laughs> so many spiritual masters out there. There's so many books. There's so many people who are practicing spiritual life. You just have to, the hard part is finding, going to the right one or the one that you think it will be, give you the answer you need. But we have, we have so much authority. Prabhupada established such a world, worldwide movement that there is knowledge available uh, all over the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Devotees, go ahead, switch on your cameras, take blessings from His Holiness, ask your questions, he's still here. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my Guru Prasenses, all glories to Shri Lakshmi, all glories to you Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class Maharaj. Today is the this appearance day of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So would you like to... Appearance. Appearance day. Yeah. Would you like to um, speak a few words about him? Yeah. Um, yeah, we are here in Mayapur and it was a great festival today and even tonight there's another part two of that festival. Um, yeah, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was a person who was empowered by Krishna to come to the material world and do this work. In his biography, it is described that he was a ray of Vishnu. He came. We understand that uh, his father, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who was also a great personality, prayed for some person to come who was a part of the Lord's personal entourage to help him bring about Lord Chaitanya's movement, which was pretty much in turmoil at that time. And the answer of his prayer was his own son, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And his appearance in the world indicated all of the characteristics of a great soul. He was not, he didn't come born, he wasn't born by karma. He was, he was actually delivered into this world by the Lord to do this mission of spreading Krishna consciousness. He's the link between our spiritual master and the previous acharyas also. Because everything we learn from Srila Prabhupada is coming from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's preaching was a little bit different than Srila Prabhupada's preaching in that he was preaching to aristocratic people. He was preaching to people in high positions, people who were learned scholars. His language was uh, dictionary language. Even those who understood English could not understand what he was saying because he used such terminology that was not the what we say the parlance of the time. Even today, we were we hear that even when he spoke in native Bengali, even those who understood Bengali couldn't understand what he was saying. Therefore, he had that vision of reaching the educated class of people, those who are highly learned, those who are in powerful positions. But he also spoke basic knowledge in general about Lord Chaitanya's movement and how Lord Chaitanya is the incarnation in this age to spread the glories of the Sankirtan movement, which is the Yuga Dharma in this age. So um, he was lion guru. He would not compromise. I mean, many times he... He was uh, threatened physically if he didn't tone down his preaching and make it more, you know, 
uh, palatable for everyone, but he wasn't in that mood. Uh, many times, there, there were many t attempts in his life, but he continued to preach. He, and he was uncompromising. Srila Prabhupada was not uncompromising, but Prabhupada used different language in order to reach the Western mind because if Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was preaching to Western people, they, they wouldn't be able to handle it. There was one professor, Professor um, Southers, you can read it in the life of Bhakti Siddhanta, who came from Ohio State University to meet Bhakti Siddhanta. And Bhakti Siddhanta, he asked him many questions, and the answers he gave him was such um, dictionary language that he used in the answers that Professor Stutters, Southers was astounded. He didn't even understand it, but later on he studied the answers and started to break through the understanding. And Bhakti Siddhanta did that in order to show that Vaishnavam, Vaishnavas are highly learned people. They're not just sentimentalists who sing and dance and you know eat food. <laughs> they are then they are the greatest scholars in the world. <laughs> so he wanted to give authority and at the same time uh, uh, enlighten the educated class of people. So he had a particular mission. And it was him that actually inspired going around the world and preaching Krishna consciousness. He took Bhakti Vinod Thakur's vision of, you know, every town and village, which was spoken by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who said that in every town and village, my message, my, my, my uh, practice will be practiced there. And so Bhakti Siddhanta was sending his representatives, his followers, to different countries in order to preach to the Western. He went, they sent, they went to they went to London, they went to France, they went to Germany, they went to some of the Asian countries. And then Srila Prabhupada was the one that came all the way to the West, to America. So that was Bhakti Siddhanta's service to Lord Chaitanya is to spread Krishna consciousness around the world. You could read his life. There's a three volumes set by Bhakti Vikash Swami. Very, very detailed. Took him 22 years to do these three volumes. Quite detailed life of Bhakti Siddhanta, the inner workings of the Gaudiya Math, their preaching, many of the uh, episodes that Bhakti Siddhanta has faced in his preaching. It's a wonderful read. Um, it's it's quite voluminous, but it's interesting. And if you really want to, yeah, it's called Life of Bhakti Siddhanta. If you really are interested in learning about this great personality, which I think we should all be, because what Srila Prabhupada has given us is really what he heard from his spiritual master. That's good. We should study the life of Bhakti Siddhartha. It's an eye-opener in spiritual knowledge. And what is actually a great personality. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for sharing about Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. It's a divine appearance day. Uh, any last minute questions? I can see Maharaj is getting tired. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> we are not sure if he's tired or not. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I, I have something from Radha Jyoti Mataji. She's saying, okay, the price of the book. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. It is 
2200 rupees it's, it's in INR if you want to purchase that and uh, please announce Mataji it will be service to Guru Maharaj how wonderful thank you Mataji for sharing I don't know if this book is available on um, Amazon probably not most likely it is most likely <laughs> Three volumes, it's not just one book. Three volumes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Any other questions from anybody? Otherwise, we can end the call. One Shakalpa The name of the book, Mataji. The name of the book. 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 The name